everybody, it's Sophia Marco, and we are on episode 9 of The Alienist called Requiem. And I'm sorry we're a day late, but we had some other things we had to take care of. But, we want to start now. It's Chrysler, and he's devastated by Mary's death. Last week, she died while defending herself against Connor. Remember that he and the Swede had walked into Chrysler's house looking for him. Cyrus, encumbered from his recent attack by the serial killer, and Stevie, who was subdued by the Swede, were unable to help Mary. Now Chrysler is frozen in grief, standing by Mary's grave, unable to move, to speak, even when it begins pouring and everyone has left but the grave diggers filling in the grave. During the funeral, when Sarah expressed her condolences, Kreitzler refused to respond. <laughs> I guess he's still angry with her. On the other hand, Roosevelt reminded Kreitzler, who told him when he lost one of his children, You're not alone in your sorrow. There's no shame in grieving for those you love. Sorry. So Kreitzler takes himself out of the investigation, too devastated to think about anything except Mary. Meanwhile, the brothers, Lucius and Marcus, question the Swede about his and Connor's intrusion into Kreitzler's house and what happened to Mary. He falsely claims that she invited them in, snickering and sneering like she was a prostitute. When the brothers had had enough of his BS, they informed the Swede that she couldn't speak. He quickly recovered from the shock of hearing that and said it was in her eyes, inviting them in and wanting more. Afterwards, Sarah wants to keep going with the investigation. John is doubtful because Chrysler can't help. But she says the team has a name now, John Beecham. They can continue investigating. Sarah rents a saloon that had been shut down as a new headquarters for the team. They form a new strategy, focusing on the Lower East Side and only have eight days until the Feast of St. Boniface, another Christian holiday. So they figure out John Beecham was released from the hospital in 1890. And the twins that Chrysler talked about, who had come to see him, they hadn't been murdered until 1893. So where was he? Where was John Beecham? And why did he change his name to John Beecham? So what to do? Go to the census office, yay! I do genealogical work, and that sure looked like real census records to me that the team delved into at the census office. But do they find John Beecham as a resident of the Lower East Side, where the murders took place? Not yet, because Sarah discovers that John Beecham was one of the hundreds of enumerators that the Census Bureau hired at the time. An enumerator, <clears throat> unlike today where we receive census forms in the mail to fill out, enumerators in the past went door to door collecting census information from each dwelling. Dr. Charles Mur Murray, head of the Census Bureau, said John Meacham had worked for him for three years, and he was a good employee. However, he had to fire him due to a complaint he received from some parents, who said Beecham showed an inappropriate interest in their young daughter. He would visit her on days when he wasn't expected. Then Dr. Murray gave the team Beecham's last address, which they visit. From a room and a house owned by a cat lady was where he was living. And then, after lots more investigating, 
they visit his present dwelling. He's not there, of course, because it's nighttime. John Beecham's favorite part of the day. And he's somewhere else. Okay, Marco. What would you like to say now? What do you want me to say? Well, a lot of things happen. Oh. About Cyrus, okay. about Roosevelt visiting the commissioner. Okay. This episode was fine. <laughs> uh, it still hasn't reached another level yet because... I mean, they've, it's been so long with all these episodes where... There's a lot of crap in them, and there, and a lot of the show just feels really disassembled. And uh, it's like you have a scrapbook, and you have all the the materials like placed in it, but they're not glued in or anything. And then you shake up the scrapbook, and or it falls on the floor, and it's just all jumbled. That's like what the show is, and. <clears throat> well, let's see. What else could we talk about? Well, let's the, see. The morning. That's fine. Well, what about Chrysler? Well, he did stuff with his arm that revealed what happened to his arm. And that was cool, except I didn't really get that. Probably because she kept talking during it and... Uh, and we and so I I didn't really get that from that scene. I didn't hear what he was saying either, because his his voice is, was slow and uh, was quiet in that scene. And so, uh, what else? Uh, well, you had that scene where Cyrus yeah. tries to kill Connors. That's stupid. It was so pointless and dumb. It's just the the guy going to the bathroom and then. Cyrus walks up behind him and then leaves. He left because a little boy had to go to the bathroom too. They lived in kind of a tenement building and the little boy was there that Cyrus just completely hid. They were very upset about Chrysler and Mary. And um meaning Cyrus and Stevie. Remember that Cyrus and Stevie had been there. I said that that he Cyrus was still very injured and couldn't do much to do anything about these two men who had entered their, the, where they were. And Stevie, the Swede came up behind him and had chloroform, I guess, on a rag and put it on his, on his mouth. In the book, it was a different story. They got, both of them got severely beat up, like Cyrus got re-beat up again and Stevie got so beat up that his ribs were broken, et cetera. So, well, that didn't happen. It didn't look like in the movie or the that's, show. That's too violent. Well, I don't know, but it that's what happened in the book. So they're like, and Sarah actually discovered everybody, and she was helping to take care of them, and and you she know, can't do that. And she was no, she wasn't anywhere. She was in that. Uh, uh, that town where the Beecham grew up with his parents and um, so Cyrus it was like I said Cyrus and Steve were very upset and they both thought oh well, they could kill him a uh, Connor and they uh, they each talked about something they could do with the knife and then the next moment you see Cyrus uh, coming up behind him and okay let's move on now and actually discuss the episode instead of just well, that is Explain, the episode. I, what What do you think about it, though? I mean, why are you just giving everything away? I'm not giving anything away. You mentioned it. What did you think about it? Well, I, uh... Since I read the book, I'm just... And I, like I said to uh, Marco, I hope that uh, the ending is as good as it was in the book. Because it really is pretty cool. And uh, it, already I know it's going to be altered, but I appreciate the alteration. I won't say what that is, but it's already swung into effect, the alteration. But it still can be a really good ending if they do it right. So I'm praying that that happens. 
and um, I it's I, I don't know but it, it seemed like they showed quite a bit of Kreitzler being depressed I don't know if that was a valuable thing I mean it's understandable that he was upset he was in love with the woman and he was grieving but they just kept it was like it was like um, two different episodes, kind of like smashed together. You had one where they're doing the the, the team is doing the investigating. They visit where he lit the guy lives. They show what they find. They they go to the census office and they do all this investigation. And then they you know they interviewed that sweet guy about Mary. I mean it's all like police work investigating. And then you have the other side of the episode. And that's Chrysler. I mean, they showed him grieving, depressed. Remember, um, I don't know if it's really brought out a lot, but, he, well, they did say it. He was an accomplished uh, pianist. And, and he, he played a song. He played a little bit of a song. For her. And, and then he... So, the whole episode... The whole episode stops... Uh, I mean, the whole show stops at a screeching halt so he can sit around and feel sorry about stuff that happened. And they show him he's all, his beard's wor been grown out more, and it's that's, dark. That's, that's fine. I didn't really get that. It just everything looks the same. It's dark. It, uh, he won't answer the door. Yeah, but everything <laughs> has always looked the same in the show. There's no variety. There's no creative design anywhere it's just all dull and lifeless <laughs> just like the writing of the show and the characters and most of the acting can you tell marco doesn't like it much <laughs> of course he ha he has not read the book so i have that in the back i have that in the back of my mind reading the book would probably just piss me off <laughs> Yeah, but it's worth it. I, I raise this point again. Please read the book. And I know Caleb Carr would appreciate it. Yeah, just read the book and uh, don't watch the show. It, but this episode, it had a... I guess the ending was good with that horror stuff. They, yeah, Marco liked the ending a lot. It reminded him of fun. other horror movies. It's just, there's nothing spectacular. It's episode 9. It's the second to last episode of the show. It didn't even feel like a, a, a penultimate episode. It felt like another, just another episode. Now that's just not show. fair. So you thought it felt like a penultimate episode? Yes, where, at the end of it, yes. Uh, yeah, at the end. What about the rest of the episode? There's nothing spectacular. Well, that's not true. It's not spectacular, but their investigate their investigation leads to a few. Uh, a, a few I don't know what details. you want to call interview details that it's gonna come. Well, they're gonna if they do like I said if they do the ending. It's not going to be exactly like what happened in the book, because I've already told you they've altered it already. I see that. I can't say why, but um, it's already been altered. But if they do everything else, like pretty much about what was happened in the uh, book, it'll be really good. Mm. And I think everybody will like it. I, I have a feeling that they're going to change the ending so that Sarah can be the hero. Well, I'm not going to say anything. I'll, I, okay, I'll just say this. At the ending, Chrysler, John, and Sarah all play a part in the successful conclusion of the case. Okay? <laughs> that's all I can say. They all play a part. Wow, that's very... <laughs> I can't want to say anything else that's... because we don't even know what's going to happen in the show. Because it... it it's already different, that's but it's a good it's a good thing. That's an intelligent I have, analysis. I have not um I have not been on board with some of the All changes. The changes that's like the African American one. girl going yeah. to see Sire or going to see her quote brother that Making never happened in the book. Comment about slaves. All the sex scenes, which there was another there was one another in this one. one that was also with pointless. Connor. 
wasn't and it even lasted, very long. It I lasted mean, like two seconds. People who like those scenes and shows and movies, I mean, it's not even long or anything. It's just. It's, it, you don't. It's please, even, people, you don't need to put those in there. It doesn't add to the story. We know that Connor is a bad guy. <laughs> well, you don't need anything else to having, add to his bad character. He's, he's having sex with his wife, so. Yeah, but I mean, just, well, I'm not going to say anything else. Because I, I, the really reason why I mention it is because we've talked about it in these other episodes. So it'll be like the, what, fourth time, I think. Yeah, because the people who make this show... They're have, making an assumption of what, but what about what people want, No, I they, think. they have a, what would you call well, it? Well, I don't a, know if you call an agenda, because I don't know what the agenda would be. Well, they've had, <laughs> they, they have had agendas on the show. Yeah, but I, with, what's the agenda with the sex scene? Well, I don't, I don't think it is. <laughs> I think it's, it's like a, a psychopathia sexualis that oh. they have. And, oh yeah. I watched some of the extras that they, you really, if, if anybody's interested in seeing a part of John Gain, Wayne Gacy's brain, you've got to watch one of these extras about the serial killer. You could just look up John Wayne's game picture on Google. Well, I don't know if they would show a piece of the brain. But I guess a, a, a forensic pathologist was given permission to take his brain and so they could study it. To see if, it, if a serial killer, they've done this more than once. See if a serial killer's brain was any different from a normal brain. Because why? I mean, he killed a lot of people. Why do they do what they do? And there, it was normal. There was nothing abnormal about his brain. All right, let's get back to the episode. <laughs> so, well, I don't know if there's anything with the, else. With the sex scene. Well, it lasted about two seconds. And then after that, he goes down to the bathroom, which is really weird because they're living in a tenement house. And it's almost like being out in the country, the outhouse was like, it's like right next to the outside of the building. It's weird, like out right outside, like they had to go out on the... Uh, with the sex scene, I'd like, to, I'd like to bring up the theory. I still actually think that it's true that the writers are, are perverts and that they want us to... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they picked out specific actresses that they wanted to see naked or something. Yeah, but they don't. Uh, they don't. They didn't show that kind of thing in this at all. Well, I, I don't want to go into anything else. It's really disgusting. But <laughs> Caleb Carr did not do that in his book, like what they're doing. What like what they did in the show? How would you even do it in a book? <laughs> oh, you would be surprised. Some of yeah, these romance but, novels yeah. really get into it. No, no. Well, I I would understand with that, but uh, well, not really because it's not romantic. But what? Unless there's some... Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you better talk about it anymore. <laughs> uh, I just don't understand, like, what's the point of it? It, it lasts two seconds. Uh, it doesn't have anything for people for... Uh, it doesn't, it, add, it doesn't anything add anything to his negative anything. character. He's a bad boy. It's stupid. It's It's pointless. I, I just have to question if these writers are perverts. Even though they, they have agendas, they're also perverts. Oh, yeah. I did want to say, too, and one of the extras, they talk to uh, the Chrysler guy. They talk to John Moore. They talk to Sarah, you know, as the actors they are. And they talk to the guy who plays Roosevelt. And I brought up this fact, I don't know if it was last week, that Caleb Carr did not like the actor Brian Garrity, who plays Ro Teddy Roosevelt, and he admits, uh, Brian Garrity admits in this little extra when they got to his part that the character of Roosevelt in this show is nothing like the compelling figure that is on Mount Rushmore. So he's deliberately trying to destroy history. No, but he's just saying that they... That he his portrayal or the way they had him portray him That's is horrible. not accurate. But he was very, I mean, admitting that. And oh, oh, the actor said that. Yeah, the actor. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna say the creator's like, 
Uh, you know, guys. No, Marco. I just said the actors. They interviewed the actors the about their characters. We just we just wanted to change history. Because no, Marco. I said yeah. the the actors. I just said the actors. Well, he has a problem with it too. Well, he's just admitting that. I thought that was interesting That's that funny. he would be, and he was very nice about it and calm. And I guess he just appreciated getting to work and being able to play him. So. I thought that was nice. Well, you know? being but that wasn't an extra, though, okay? Being able to play a, a pseudo-Roosevelt. Well, so, uh, the things that they talk about in the show, about him trying to fight the corruption, that's all true. About shutting down the saloons on Sunday, all true. There's not much of that, though. Well, it couldn't, it just, there was, the corruption at that time was so bad that and he had other interests. And he even says it. He tells them he's going to be leaving. They talks to John Moore about it. He says, I'm let's leaving. Let's discuss the episode more. Okay, well, so, let's see. Um, back to the sex scene. Well, Cyrus, <laughs> that Cyrus, that's when Cyrus was there and he was going to kill him. And they he said, didn't. I read the plot analysis. It's like, Cyrus seeks revenge. And that's not like a major plot line that's, you, you know, like the, the synopsis really hammers that in that he's seeking revenge while everybody else is mourning. So I was kind of disappointed by that, especially since they had that wasted scene where he tries to kill him. He doesn't even do that. So, and then what else could I say? Well, uh, Roosevelt goes to see the commissioner, yeah. and I wish, I hope I wrote the quote down, but I don't think it did. I did. About, uh, see, this is, they're all upset that Mary got killed, Connor killed her, and, um. So, also, they, they also talked about the friend of the, the bad guy. Oh, here he had the friend and that girl and that teenage girl or I mean that 12 year old girl and I thought that was very interesting how uh, her parents told the police that she that he was molesting her even after uh, she told them that that's not even true yeah she said that she hates her parents She's a, she, what, what happens, she's a teacher. She was teaching kids in the classroom. And they came to see her and took her out of the, the cops, the boys, the brothers. They took her out of the classroom and, 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 and interviewed her and said, what happened years ago when uh, Beecham uh, came to see you? Because the, the head of the Census Bureau said that your parents complained about him and he got fired. And, she, and they said, did he lay a hand on you? And she said, no. She said, he came back and it was like he had no friends. And we both hated our parents. And so he's attracted to people uh, if they don't like their parents. Well, he, well I don't think he was going to do anything to her. She said that it seemed like he needed somebody to talk to. And that they would just talk. And so... Well, still, he was attracted to her. Right. And at the end of the episode, spoiler alert, okay, we're going to on the spoilers now. We find out that the setting of his hideout, or, I mean, his, the setting of his, where he likes to pick up boys, is also, uh, this pool place. No, not, not playing pool. Pool like water, like swimming. I think people would think that. So, I don't know. Well, it's water, and he's attracted so to water. Joseph is swimming with this other kid, and the kid says he, he's wanting to meet somebody. And so then he goes and meets with him, of course, and you know how that's going to end. And then Joseph gets out, and he's in the changing room, and he hears the sign of the body, and then opens the door and, and sees that... Uh, I mean, just sees the the bloody naked legs and hearing the sawing noises and 
That was cool. And then he, and of course you have the fake out where the person hides and then he, the Joseph killer, hides. The killer walks past. Who else would hide? The killer walks past and then you think he gets away and then, oh, shock and he gets captured. But I thought he was going to get killed, so at least he got captured. It looks like this other boy did get killed. And, I would think so. Right. Well, of course. And But then, Joseph is hiding, and he opens the door, and you see him, and it looks like he grabs him. And we think, Markle thought, he gets kidnapped. So, will Joseph be his final victim? And will Chrysler rejoin the team? Next week is the last episode, so... And so we also... I mean, we can conclude that he's not attracted to these little boys, like, dressing up as girls. Because that's been, like, the whole th thread line. And then there's just these random boys who are in a swimming pool, and they probably have told him about... No, but they're all prostitutes. I don't think so. I think they are. I don't think so, because they haven't revealed where he's worked yet, where... The place where he 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 did the work to uh, be able to kidnap them. So wherever he's worked, it's just random boys who reveal that they hate their parents. Which I still think that that guy with the silver smile, who's not even in the book, I think he would have been a better villain than this guy. Well, he's gone. <laughs> Especially because He's this kaput. guy, yeah, but but this guy, we haven't even seen his face, and that's not good at all. That's very bad. I don't know how they're gonna do his face, because they they've gone on and on now in the show and in the book about his facial tick, and that'll be very interesting how they portray that on TV. It might be really funny. I don't know. I can't even imagine it at all. Maybe they do. Even in the book, I couldn't imagine. Computer it. generation where they they pull. Well, they put an they eye stretch. patch on his face with little pins, and then they do that motion they, capture or whatever. They stretch parts of his face, and they <laughs> stretch them back and forth, and and stop motion video. And I don't know. I I couldn't imagine the actor doing that either, and the other actors not laughing <laughs> I don't know so. all we've seen and really his looks do not match the uh, the book the book in cer a certain way of course we haven't seen his face and his face has to do what was when the book because they keep talking about it on what does TV what he look like in the book well he, he, even his brother he's he is supposed to be tall he's supposed to be like 6'4 or something and they have that on there in the in the show they were looking at his job record or not his job record but what he filled out his employment form and he's like six four so he's real tall and he is supposed to be like balding and so um it's they it when they show him on tv to show the back of him he has all all this hair and a hat so it'll be interesting to see too he doesn't just—he doesn't seem like a towering six-four on TV. No. And, and I the still, only one who's towering. I prefer that silver smile guy. Well, he's gone. Sure. He's the bye-bye and -bye probably the Hudson River. <laughs> I don't know what where what which body of water he was thrown into, but. I mean, they, they didn't just have. I haven't been to New York, so. And let's talk about that because you have a show like Twin Peaks, and. And and you have it where uh, Benjamin, where you, I mean Ben, you think that he's the killer, and there's all these clues pointing to him being the killer. But then you find out that all that happened was that he slept with uh, the man girl a number of times. He didn't kill her at all. But and, and that's fine because the clues, everything is disproved and it's fine the red herring is solved but on this show 
it's almost like his character just drops off the face of the map and it's mostly because his character doesn't exist in the book but it's all and so they didn't know like what to do like how to end his character how to fit it I don't know and but on the show I mean they have that prostitute and sh and sh uh, they say the guy had a silver smile that's not a red herring that's a fact you can't do stuff like that that's not a red herring that's a fact that's a piece of evidence what other way could he have a silver smile did he just get back from uh, Milton's uh, silverware and eating it or something like I don't know and then you have the fact that uh that they showed that with his mother they had that thing with his mother on the bed like kissing him and and weirdly uh touching him and and that's not a red herring that's a fact that there's something dysfunctional well, just, there yeah well he is he's perverted and dysfunctional yeah and his but, mother's dysfunctional well they what what happened was at least on the show Remember, he was supposed to go to Brazil, so I think that it was just accepted that he went to Brazil. He's hiding. They don't know he's Stupid. dead yet, except for the commissioner who Stupid. hired O'Connor or Connor to go watch him. He and the Swede hired to watch him, not kill him. Right. Well, he got mad because when they were on that walkway of that bridge, which they were building. Um, the guy said, I'm a Van Bergen. You can't do anything to me. You're nothing. Or something like that. He belittled him and that made him mad and he shot him in the head. See, I wish that <laughs> instead of that, they could have disproved it somehow. All they had to do was create some more story. They're not very good at creating things. They're just good at inserting agendas into things that have already been created. Well, so I guess that'd be a little hard for them. Chrysler did mention twice, at least, that he didn't think Van Bergen was the killer. They have an episode that's called The Silver Smile. I know that, but he said, I remember, twice he did not think that that guy was the killer. Something, I don't know what happened, I, I don't remember exactly why but he said that twice. What I think would have been cool is if the guy had gone to Brazil and and uh, they would have to go to Brazil uh -huh. and follow him around. No, well, that doesn't happen after. in the book at all. Well, I don't care. They didn't care enough to just completely adapt the book. They did all these changes that disrespect the story and insult the author who wrote it. So all in all I give this episode a solid B just because of the ending and because it mostly has Daniel Brule and he's not offensive to the show so he's so good what do you give it? I'll just give it the same well why not a B plus? Well, I'll give it a B plus I won't <laughs> I don't, I don't like that, that they showed him uh, over and over grieving. I mean, he's grieving. I mean, that's it. He's grieving. Well, there's there no... nothing significant about him showing them. I don't, that's why I said it's like two episodes smashed together. And you go, you flip to think... one side and you flip to the other. So you flip to one side, you flip to the other. I didn't you get think that. You think that you could just have a whole episode of him sitting around talking no, to himself? No, I just thought they could show him a couple times or once, and that's it. Or maybe they would show him twice because you'd have to have the part where Steve and Cyrus are talking about he won't come out of where he is. He's holding himself up. <laughs> he won't talk to anybody. And, you know, there's a way to kill that. I've got my weapon here, and there's a way to get that guy. And Cyrus goes, no, this way would be better. All you do is get the back vein of his leg or something, and no one would ever know, and blah, you know. And there, and then that that would be it. But they kept sandwiching. They, they have these two, and then they well, show him playing the piano with his also, one good hand. It's and, good that Cyrus didn't do that again. He didn't Oh, uh, I know. Kill I'm glad they again. didn't, because it, that is just... And that, antithetical because for one thing he was saved by Chrysler from murdering somebody so 
he would do that to Chrysler, go murder somebody else after what Chrysler did for him? I don't think so. No, that wouldn't be a good and thing. And that so shows I'm glad also that they didn't do that. It shows character development for Cyrus and for the fact that it completely disproves that stupid dumb sister character that said that he's a slave owner because that he's kept him in there when he's gotten better obviously he isn't even gonna kill someone now so right. shows growth and development so is that it well isn't that interesting to think about that too what happened sister she just disappeared Nothing. why because she was never there to begin with she's an in a character oh yeah but she was never there in the book so in the in the show she came there and visited him, and then she disappeared. You that's, never heard about her again. When you guys hear about, like, agendas, that's what we mean by agendas. Because all she does is come on screen for ten minutes, and if even be that, shitty and, say, and say, you're you're a bad white person, you're a slave owner. That's <laughs> an agenda. I don't, I don't care about the morality of it. It's an agenda. It has no place being on the show. It doesn't have anything to do with the show. It doesn't even have anything to do with the characters. So. So anyway, it'll be, I, I can't wait to see next week. Because I can't wait to see if they make it as good as the ending of the book. Yeah. They uh, Even though they've altered it. I, which is already apparent. But we'll see how the alteration fits into the ending. It has to be, I would think it would have to be pretty, at least somewhat close to what happened in the book. I kind of want to see uh, John get together with Sarah because I don't like that you told me her ending in the book and I don't like that ending at all for the character. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe they will do some nicey-nicey things that happened in, in TV sh uh, movies like Hallmark <laughs> where people get to, more, a lot of people get together. Well, it's, it's not really... It's and they just, live happily ever after somewhat. It's just a logical thing. I mean, they have all this... I mean, episodes two and three, they're like uh, really hammering in that they're, they're going to have a romance. And then that just drops off. So I, I really think that they do have a romance. So that's it. Well, number one, we hope the killer gets caught. And number two, Marco wants Sarah and John to get together. And three, poor Chrysler, he's just, <laughs> he's, well, okay, just, uh, never mind. That slave we're just, owner. He's, we're just going to see what happens next week, so stay tuned for that and for us reviewing the last episode of The Alienist. He's a slave owner. Next Monday night. Bad slave owner. Chrysler. Getting to the end of March. Yep. So goodbye. Bye, everybody.